Veterans of both World War II and the Vietnam War risked their lives for their country. But the way they were treated by both the U.S. government and their fellow citizens could not have been more different. A lot of that had to do with why they were fighting in the first place. On December 7, 1941, Japan waged its surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. The U.S. declared war on Japan, and it didn't take much to convince the nation to rally around the cause. The sudden criminal attacks perpetrated by the Japanese in the Pacific have treacherously violated the long-standing peace between us. And when Japan's ally, Nazi Germany, declared war on the U.S. days later, World War II took on the larger goal of fighting fascism. Though there was a draft, thousands voluntarily enlisted to fight, some even lying about their age or illnesses to get in. The reasons for U.S. involvement in Vietnam were a bit murkier. At the height of the Cold War, America's leaders were determined to stop the spread of communism. So they threw their support behind the South Vietnamese to prevent a takeover by the communist North. But unlike World War II, there wasn't even a formal declaration of war. And the majority of Americans weren't concerned with the affairs of the Vietnamese. But President Lyndon B. Johnson and the powers that be wanted a win against communism. So the U.S. escalated involvement, sending over two million troops to Vietnam throughout the course of nearly a decade. In contrast to World War II, many potential Vietnam recruits actively avoided the draft. Muhammad Ali, one of the most famous examples. Hell no, we won't go! Hell no, we won't go! Support for the troops at home also reflected the nation's attitudes toward the two wars. World War II propaganda urged Americans to aid the troops abroad in any way they could. Civilians donated scrap metal and rubber for equipment, rationed food and gasoline, and even grew fruits and vegetables in so-called victory gardens. During the Vietnam War, the mood at home was downright hostile. Vietnam was the first televised conflict. Footage and photos beamed every ugly detail directly into American homes atrocities against women and children, drug use, and chemical warfare. The images sparked a massive anti-war movement that demanded American troops come home. And here's where the experience of World War II and Vietnam veterans diverged the most, the homecomings. When Japan surrendered in 1945 and World War II ended, Victorious soldiers arrived home to ticker tape parades and emotional reunions with loved ones. After nearly 10 years of fighting in Vietnam, the cost and casualties proved too much for America to bear. The U.S. finally withdrew in 1973, and South Vietnam fell to the Communist North two years later. It was America's first major defeat, and the troops bore the brunt of this loss when they returned home. Many recalled being spat upon or called baby killers. Others felt ostracized as scapegoats for an unwinnable war rife with dishonorable conduct. And this led to another stark difference, the way veterans were treated by the system after returning home. When World War II soldiers came home, the Veterans Administration offered them generous education benefits and a monthly living stipend under the GI Bill. In contrast, Vietnam veterans often had trouble receiving enough compensation to cover their living and educational expenses. Bureaucracy, red tape, and cutbacks led many to avoid the VA altogether. It wasn't until the 1980s that America began to make things right with Vietnam veterans. A crucial step was the 1982 dedication of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. The late 70s and 80s also saw a rise in movies portraying the horror and heroism of the Vietnam War. While many films about World War II served as propaganda to reinforce its necessity, movies about Vietnam were more ambivalent and reflective, and often from the perspective of surviving veterans. The box office successes of films such as Platoon and Born on the Fourth of July signaled that Americans were finally coming to understand and appreciate the men and women who served in Vietnam.